Hi, Moglets. So this will be a two-part series going over both sides. In this one, why you should love Genshin, and in the other one, why you should hate it. I'm gonna try and have these released at the same time, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that. More information about the smaller details I don't wanna bore you with in the intro here will be in a pinned comment below if you wanna check that out. But yeah, I've been playing Genshin since its final beta, so almost two years ago now, and I definitely have some pretty concrete feelings about it, both good and bad. In this video, we're gonna be sunshine and rainbows and talk about the good things. First First of all, I want to talk about the sort of more basic, objective, positive things about it. Firstly, it's free to play. Zero dollar investment to get you started. Outside of that, you can play it on pretty much any device you have. Phone, tablet, PC. PS5, whatever, it's available pretty much everywhere, and I find that as a pretty big plus because I play on basically every platform. And it's super convenient, when I'm out and about I can pop out my phone, you know, do my dailies real quick or whatever. When I'm at home I can play it on the PC or PS5, etc, etc. And I'm kind of bundling all that into point number one. Point number two, I would say, is the overall feel and aesthetic of the game, which is of course more subjective, but when you consider this is technically a mobile game, um, it, they've come a long way. But character design, overall graphics, the soundtrack I, I find is excellent, and the fact it is a real open world. Speaking on open world, I don't think it's as dead as like some might argue. I've played through Elden Ring, Forbidden West, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, all open world games. There is just simply a lot of dead space. That's just what it is. I also want to talk about sort of the variety of scenery. I think Genshin does a really good job with this. We have like the luscious green landscape of Mondstadt, then like the super cold blue area of Dragonspine, the yellower, more earthy Liyue. Inazuma definitely feels different from the rest as well. So in a way, I would say it's closer to Breath of the Wild's open world where you just have a lot of variety. And while most of the open world like actual locations are more just a vehicle for, you know, a side quest or a main story quest, I feel like that's pretty similar across the board when it comes to open world. And there are like lots of little things to collect like the oculi, thousands of hidden chests, so on and so forth. As for number three, consistent updates, new characters, quality of life changes. Besides the recent delay we had, they've been pretty consistently putting out major updates every month and a half or so. When the game first started, we only had Monshat and Liyue, then Dragonspine was added, all of Inazuma was added, in Kanomiya, which I should still probably get around to doing, the Chasm somewhat recently, maybe even more by the time you're watching this, and these continual updates, adding new areas, new side quests, new character stories, it's all good for like general new continual content, but also anyone installing Genshin today is gonna have a lot of stuff to do for a long time. All these new areas to explore, character stories to go through, extra side quests or chests to farm, etc, etc. For the fourth point, I'd like to mention their characters as a overall positive thing. Just starting with design, I would say they're all incredibly unique. Like you can easily tell who is who in one of these little tiny circular things up here that's maybe 50 pixels. So yeah, design wise, they're all very unique. I I've played lots of games where it almost seems like they're just swapping around assets here and there, but these characters, you know, really seem their own creation in a way, if you know what I mean. Mean. Speaking more on characters and kind of in the same line, their mechanics and skill set, a lot of them are very unique as well. There are some similar characters like Singcho and the uh, newer character Yalan, maybe even like Eula and Razor are somewhat similar in their mechanics, but even that is a bit of a stretch. They're essentially both main DPSs who wield a claymore and deal physical damage primarily, but even they have somewhat different playstyles. So I'd say all in all designs and mechanic wise, the characters are super unique. That's why most of the time in my comment sections you can see you should have used this you know, one specific character in your team. They don't say, hey, well, you could have used this one or this one or this one or this one instead. It's just a specific character that works really well in this certain way. And that makes building teams really fun as well because, you know, there's lots of possibilities there. And finally, one other point about characters that I really appreciate is that most of the four stars are actually really good. Shanling, Singcho, Yinfei, I could pretty much go through all of them. You know, Bennett, one of the best supports in the game. All four stars, all very good. And four stars are quite accessible. They're common in gotcha. Every so often we have two new four stars here in the Star Glitter Exchange, so you can save up your uh, Masterless Star Glitter and pick one of those up. So yeah, in a lot of other gotchas I played, I, I even reckon say most gotchas I've played, anything under maximum rarity is outclassed by something that is higher rarity. But in Genshin's case, since the characters are unique, there are some four stars that offer things no five stars do, you know? So I think that's cool. This next point I guess will have to be like a 4.5 because I totally forgot to mention this while recording, but the actual gameplay, probably the most important part of any game, I think is absolutely fantastic. 
incredibly responsive. Characters do what you tell them to do instantly. I've always been a fan of the flashy graphics as someone who isn't prone to seizures. But yeah, the overall feel, quickness, responsiveness of actions, you you input and then they do them. I guess because I've just been playing it so long, I kind of forgot about this whole aspect, like <laughs> the actual gameplay of the game. I'm really trying to avoid like naming other games, but like a lot of the more modern AAA titles have some sort of like purposeful delay in in character movements and attacks I guess to make it feel more realistic or whatever and I never really like like that very much the instantaneous actions I get to enjoy in this game I, I just appreciate and that's all I can really say about it and as we were talking about a little earlier you know it's a team-based game four different characters swapping out from one character to another feels good fast responsive intuitive but yeah overall gameplay there as a 4.5 and as an afterthought which is kind of shameful and up at number five is I'm not sure why I saved this for number five it's a it's a pretty small thing I guess and this is kind of only a half good thing because it doesn't do what a lot of other mobile games do actually now that I think about it other non-mobile games do this as well. I think it's most notorious in MMOs, but it's that it doesn't demand that much of your time. Sure, if you want to be maximum efficient, you have to do your daily quests every day. That's four daily quests, takes five or 10 minutes, and then you have some resin to use. Unless you're actually refilling your resin, that doesn't take too long to deplete either. And then you're done for pretty much the whole day. You could log on later in the day to do a couple more domain runs so you don't cap out your resin, because I think it takes like 20 hours to fully fill up from zero. So logging on to do a couple domain runs or make a condensed resin is basically all you need to do. I've played lots of games, I would say mainly MMOs, but some action RPGs as well, where you'd have like specific times you need to log in. Like there's certain events happening at, I don't know, 6 p.m. or something. And you'll miss out on whatever this is if you're not on by seven or whatever. So you have like a little window here. And even though I was really into those games for a bit, it just got exhausting very quickly. And on top of that, they would have like daily requirements or whatever that are way beyond what, what Genshin asks of you, which are these four little daily quests, which take five or 10 minutes total. But yeah, I rambled about that a little too long. There's probably gonna be one point in both of these videos that are kind of the same. And that is the fact Genshin does not have PVP because that is a good and a bad thing in a way. It's also quite subjective, but I wanna talk about why I think that's a good thing in this video. Very simple, it makes the game much less pay to win. If you could fight other players and those other players happen to be whales, they'd kick your ass without trying. The Spiral Abyss is Genshin's current hardest content. And yes, it is difficult, but the fact is there are free to play that can 36 star Abyss. Perhaps they needed to play longer, perhaps they needed to follow a sort of meta route, but it can be done which is definitely a good thing because that means since you're not directly competing with other players, you just need to be strong enough to fully complete the abyss, which again, like with enough time and game knowledge and yeah, some skill as well, this can be done without spending a cent. So again, the lack of PVP can be seen as a positive thing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below, leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.